anyone to hunt and fish whenever they deem they want to. Thank you for your testimony. Anybody with any questions? Senator Black. One question. Nature Conservatory own any property in our state other than in my district, do you know? They do. They have Dunn Ranch, and then they do own some down by Peck Ranch, and they have some, I think they just purchased on Little Blue River outside of Kansas City. Okay. And on that, on that property, you can hunt there, right? In certain cases, it yeah. seems to me like in the Dunn, on the Dunn Ranch, they do organize hunts up there. Yeah, up to there. manage, I think, like deer population and stuff, because they, they do the buffalo and then they have the then, wild grouse. Yes, the grouse. Most mm -hmm. of the time, if you get to go, you get to take pictures, but I, dance. I don't know where they allow any of that hunting, and I don't. I don't um, uh, thank you. I don't know, but I'll check. Why do you want to go I'm buffalo not, hunting? I'm not going to get up and go up there in the morning and sit in the brush. <laughs> Any further questions for the witness? <laughs> Thank you for your testimony. Anybody here else not in favor of HJR 20? Seeing none, anybody here for informational purposes only? Seeing none, Representative, do you have any final comments? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, there have been a few lawsuits in states where I've adopted this and they've all been uh, refuted without much trouble. So I, at this point in time, after those lawsuits have been unsuccessfully brought, I really don't think that's much of an issue. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You, Representative. That mm -hmm. concludes the hearing on House Committee Substitute House Joint Resolution 20. Next up will be House Committee Substitute House Bill 88. Representative Veep. There we go. My name is Rudy Bede. I'm the representative for 59th District, which is rural Cole County and parts of Jefferson City. We have House Bill 88 here, which deals with animal chiropractic care. You have the identical bill here with the identical language now, and I think in Senate Bill 471, which is carried by Senator Burnscutter. Uh, so I know you heard this bill, so I won't bore you too much, but present, under present law, animal chiropractic care is regulated, but in order for an animal chiropractor to practice it, you have to have a veterinarian stand there and oversee you. So if you go to the chiropractor with your dog, you, the chiropractor can treat you but can't treat your dog because you didn't bring the vet with you. This bill was a compromise worked out between all parties and, and you will note that in the House, it, in the committee, it was uh, 15 yeas and two noes. In the House, it passed out 137 yeas and zero noes. The, we have met with the veterinary board and the chiropractic board and cleared up the issues of who's going to be the one in charge enforcing it, what can it do, and the new law, the new, this bill as stands says there has to be a referral basis. That has been done in a lot of states that have the referral basis, so for animal chiropractic care to, to treat, animal, a chiropractor with animal, animal chiropractic training to treat, they must also have a referral from a vet. Some people think that's not necessary, some people think they have more. That's why we worked out a compromise between all parties. And uh, I respectfully ask you to, to support the bill. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a growing field. The number of horses in our state, the number of dogs in our state is being treated. And uh, just so there's no unexpected disclosure. I do have a niece that's an animal chiropractor now and is trained to do animal chiropractic care. But she would like to do more of it. And there are other people I know who would like to do it in the state. But they can't do it now because it just doesn't coordinate to, to bring your vet and the vet and the chiropractor and everybody together at one time. So it's really a, a bill that everybody has worked on, I think will work, and I respectfully request your support. Thank you, Chris. Any questions for the representative? I do find it interesting that uh, I, I do watch Facebook reels, and uh, for some reason I have seen more reels on animal chiropractor than ever. I'm like, <laughs> must, we're doing something right, I guess. So. Economic development. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Uh, anybody here? In favor of House Bill 88? In favor. Please come forward. Hello. 
<clears throat> Chair and Mr. Committee members here. I am Dr. Melissa Georgievich. I am an animal chiropractor, um, a DC, so doctor of chiropractic first, and then certified by the International Veterinary of Chiropractic Association for Animal Chiropractic. I've been doing so for six years. I am uh, here to be in favor of the bill that's present. I would like to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Anybody here else in favor of House Bill 88? Please come forward now. Good morning, Chairman and the Senate Committee. My name is Dr. Chelsea Gaudet. I'm here also on behalf of All Creature Chiropractics with Dr. Emily McLeod. Um, I am here in support for this bill. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Anybody here else in favor of House Bill 88? Good morning, my name is Dr. Megan Gressley. I am also a doctor of chiropractic and I received advanced training through the American Veterinary Chiropractic Association for Animal Chiropractic Care. I'm in favor of this bill. Do you have any questions about animal chiropractic care this morning? Any questions for witness? Just Senator Carter. as a side, what animals need chiropractic work the most? I mean, I'm thinking I've got horses and cats. Are we, what kind of work do you do actually? Yes, so it's really incredible. Um, and animals respond very well because they don't carry as much stress as people do. But a lot of times in dogs, you'll see them start hesitating to jump up into trucks. You'll see them start hesitating to walk downstairs. And horses, we ride their backs. And it's really incredible to see horses and the rider communicate together. But when there is a misalignment, they're in pain. And so certain cues, they'll switch their tails or they won't pick up a certain right lead or left lead. Or you'll see a dramatic decrease in their performance. And with a horse that's working really well and all of a sudden they stop wanting to work for you, you have to start looking for pain. And they can't communicate that clearly so it's really incredible to be trained and to check joint palpation and like tissue um, like tautness or whether it's more relaxed and so through adjustments you'll actually see that relax and they respond really well um, so that's primarily what I see but um, everything under the sun too even um, with show pigs and show cattle too um, depth of walk is really important and if they're hauling and training um, there's a huge um, also area of need there too um, and I would love to see even dairy production. Hasn't really been worked or like, I feel like it's very beginning, but with animals, when they're in pain, they don't produce as much milk. Um, and you see big dairy farms, the cows can be mean to each other. Um, and so they'll get subtle misalignments that creates pain. But when an animal's in less pain, that would increase production as well. So I feel like that's a, a newer need, but we see even now they'll trim cattle's feet because they can walk better and less stressed on their joints. So I feel like that's an, a new like realm as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for educating us. And Thank what you. area do you practice in? So I'm actually local here um, in the Jefferson City area, but um, there's not a lot of animal chiropractors in the state of Missouri. So I feel like as an animal chiropractor, you travel up to, um, I'm also licensed in Colorado. So I have mm -hmm. gone and practiced animal chiropractic out there. Um, it's a direct access state, so it's a little bit easier there as well. Well, thank you for sharing your testimony. Thank you so much. Senator, once again, going back to Facebook Reels, it's all horses and dogs. <laughs> and by the way, to clarify, do not drive down the road and watch that, just so you know. From <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually, when she said jumping out of trucks and all that, that kind of kind of reminded me of myself a little bit there. So anyway, anybody here else in favor of House Bill 88? Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Lynn Schlosser, registered lobbyist for the Missouri Chiropractic Physicians Association. We'd like to go on record in support. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you. Anybody here else in favor of House Committee Substitute House Bill 88? Seeing none, anybody here not in favor of House Committee Substitute House Bill 88? Seeing none, anybody here for informational purposes only? Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Heath Clarkston. I'm here on behalf of the Missouri Veterinary and Medical Association. Uh, we have worked with Representative Heath, and we truly appreciate his willingness to work with the veterinarians. And with that, we are no longer in opposition, as we were earlier this year. I think there's a lot of protections in this bill that ensures that the veterinarian has a, has a key role in, in diagnosis. And um, with that, it, this bill, as drafted, uh, eased all our concerns. So. We're here today just to let everybody know we're, 
no longer in opposition. Any questions for the witness? Senator Black. Pete, this isn't what it sounds like, all right? I know it's not going to sound as good as what I'm thinking in my head. Uh, government is going to make a new fee for veterinarians when we do this. It's going to happen. And it on the federal government side, we have VFD, you know, you may not know, but just corner after corner after corner, the federal government puts in more in rules and regulations that affects me being able to treat my livestock. And somebody in here probably knows what day in June it is. I'm no longer going to be able to buy LA 300, almost anything at all. And that's going to require me to go to a vet. And my vets are all, for some reason, Chillicothe's blessed with a lot of them. They're all good. And, and they all will answer the phone. And of course, they come to my house and look at my livestock before they write that veterinary directive. I, I can guarantee you that. And then send me a bill for $7,500. And that's what this thing will. Don't laugh over there, you two. Ultimately, there's some fee structure. My, my snidey question is, is the fee structure already been designed once you got the agreement? Or will it be something we're going to wait a little while to decide how many hundred dollars that costs? I would probably go a different route of explaining the bill. But um, <laughs> I, think, I think probably what this bill would do is ensure that if there is going to be chiropractic care on an, on an animal, it is necessary. Um, uh, we want that's number one and number two the, the law currently allows this it's just direct supervision this this changes that yes and it's probably a good thing for both the veterinarian and for the veterinary chiropractor because you know i don't think the veterinarian needs to be standing right behind the animal chiropractor doing their job and i think this bill probably alleviates that issue yeah that's kind of the same stuff that i had kids uh talk about in ffa speeches about HAACP when all this started down the road and my friend at Mormon said this is the best thing ever happened because we're going to put all the little elevators out of business because they're not going to be able to uh, grind feed for you anymore. Thanks. Thank you. Any further questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you for testimony. Thank you. Anybody here else for informational purposes? Seeing none, Representative Veet, do you have any closing comments? Thank you, Representative. That concludes the hearing on House Committee Substitute House Bill 88. Next up is House Committee Substitute House Bill 576, Representative Shields. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I am Representative Brenda Shields, representing District 11 from St. Joseph, Missouri. House Bill 576 is a bill that strengthens animal welfare laws in the state, provides protections for our food supply, protects the safety and well-being of individuals and livestock transporters and strengthens penalties for the disruption of manufacturing and the interference of livestock during transport. My district is home of Triumph Foods, a large pork processing plant. Our local plant employs 2,500 people and processes 20,000 swine a day. Not only is employee safety top of mind, strict food safety and animal welfare protocols are followed. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> animal welfare begins with animal pr um, producers and continues through the safe, efficient, and acceptable transportation process to bring animals safely to market. The delivery of swine is carefully planned for continuous delivery throughout the production day. Unfortunately, um, over the past several years, individuals, in some case organizations, have attempted to disrupt the livestock transportation system. The disruption can cause a major disruption in the entire manufacturing process and, most importantly, affect our safe and reliable food supply. Examples of tampering include individuals throwing water into the trucks or stopping the truck and inserting needles into the pigs. When this product is being processed, these foreign objects are found and shutting down the entire process. Because these individuals are tampering with our food supply, it is important that we change the penalties associated with these crimes. In recent years, other states have passed laws addressing the interference in the transportation of livestock, including Iowa. To develop this piece of legislation, I work closely with several prosecutors in the state to determine the penalties associated with the interfering with transportation of livestock. After discussing the crime, it was recommended that the first offense be a Class E and the second offense be a Class C felony. This legislation is reasonable and a common sense approach to support Missouri's livestock producers and processors, protect the welfare of animals, and provide a safe and work environment for livestock transporters and to protect the counties or the countries. 
Missouri's food supply. And with that, I went fast because I knew you heard this bill just last week, but I am happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions for the representative? <coughs> Seeing none. Cool. Anybody here to testify in favor of House Committee Substitute House Bill 576? Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, um, Brent Hemphill here on behalf of the Missouri Pork Association. I think the sponsor did a very good job of summarizing the bill. We want to go on record in support of it. Thank you for testimony. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none. Anybody here else in favor of House Committee Substitute for House Bill 576? Mr. Chairman, Shannon Cooper today representing the Missouri Cattlemen's Association. We just want to go on record in support of the bill. You've heard it before, and Representative Shields did a fine job explaining the situation. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank, thank you for testimony. Anybody here else in favor of House Bill 576? All right, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Ben Travels, Missouri Farm Bureau, here to go on record in support. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you for testimony. Anybody here else in favor of House Committee Substitute House Bill 576? Good morning. I'm John Bryan, Missouri Poultry Federation, uh, here to uh, add support to the bill. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you for testimony. You. Anybody here else in favor of House Committee Substitute House Bill 576? Seeing none, anybody here not in favor of House Committee Substitute House Bill 576? Seeing none, anybody here for informational purposes only? Seeing none, Representative, do you have any final comments? Thank you. Um, this bill did pass out of the House 129 to, um, 121 to 29 opposed, and I sure appreciate your support. I think it's really important for um, all of our safe, reliable food source in the state of Missouri. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. That concludes the hearing on House Committee Substitute House Bill 576. Uh, today we plan on executing uh, three bills. I make a motion we move into executive session. Do I have a second? I have a second. We are in executive session. Um, I now move that House Bill 403 be brought before the committee. Do I have a second? Yes, I have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is for the committee. This is Representative Hayden's bill that he presented on 41823. It modifies the provisions relating to large animal veterinary medicine or long repayment program. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Senator Black. Yes, I have a Senate amendment um, to place on 403. It has been distributed to everyone in the group. Uh, I spoke with each one of them. I know there may be a little bit of discussion about this bill. Uh, most people consider it breed specific uh, bans on animals within areas. Uh, I'm one of the people that believe that we need to look at vicious dog bans, not breed specific dog bans. I fall under that category as an old paper boy. Uh, the dog that got me the worst on my paper route was a pointer. Thank goodness Jim had no teeth, but he wouldn't yell before he bit me when I was going by Lloyd's house. Judy is um, the pointer sister, not sister, but Lloyd hunted with as well. At least she was barking before she bit you. So my uh, experience with dogs and vicious dogs aren't always breed specific. It has to do with what people have done to those animals before. And I'm sure good old Jim, toothless, toothless Jim, a previous paper boy probably worked him over with the paper and did all kinds of crap to him that made me an easy target when I went by his house at 4.30 in the morning and he would grab me by the back of the hip. So I fall in the category that I do believe we have vicious dogs. I, I have a, a daughter that owned a um, oh shoot, border collie and that border collie, I don't mean this for our mature women in the group, but when you hit about 65 years of age, for some reason, that dog hated you. And it bit my daughter's aunt for no reason. Now, she smoked. We wonder if that had something to do with it on the people that that dog would go after, wherever we were at. But, uh, you know, in that case, Jaron was pretty upset. But Dad said, the dog's got to go. You can't give it to anybody else, et cetera. You've got to get rid of it. And maybe the old farm country boy me just says dogs 
are vicious. Some of them are born that way maybe with something, but I don't believe it's necessarily because you have a big blocky head. At Orsland's the other day when I bought feed bunks, there was a part big blocky head dog there laying there, and he was just nice bee. I'm going to bring him home, but my wife won't let me have another dog until I quit this job. <clears throat> so, therefore, I'm hoping it'll be another seven years, but I am missing my border collie, Australian Shepherd Mix, because they like me better than anything else in Livingston County. So, with that, I'm offering this amendment. If anybody's got any questions, do that. I did guarantee the sponsor, as well as each one of you sitting here, if this causes major crisis, I don't want to hurt the vet supply in the state of Missouri. Senator, are you moving for the adoption of this amendment? I move for the adoption with that fine introduction. Is there, do I have a second? You do have a second. Uh, I think you've explained the amendment pretty good. Is there any discussion? Senator Razor. Senator, that was a fine introduction. Um, I rescued last summer a 13-month-old, 125-pound English Mastiff. Um, and wrestling with her this weekend, she, her paw got me right in the eye. And so I have quite the shiner at the moment. Uh, would that be considered vicious? Well, you I know with not. me, Senator, the answer would be no. But to some people, just the fact that you funny. own that breed of, just you possess that breed of, oh, there are some people that are upset about yeah, it. She, it's kind of like being around Great Pyrenees with somebody with sheep. They're quiet. You look around the corner, and you're staring straight at the dog. It's a little spooky to begin with. It's, and then once you figure out that dog's a big, cuddly pet, it's not a problem. Yeah, she'll crawl up on your lap most of the time. I did have an actual question though. So in the vicious dog order, that has to be a individual dog by individual dog decision somehow? Yes, that would, that would be accurate that the municipalities would have to, Set instead it. of being breed specific, have to define what they want to define as vicious dog. And I know that's going to cause trouble, too. We both know that as well. But at least it's the identifying what that animal does. And most of the time, it's not the animal. I guess I believe that. I mean, uh, it is the people that handle and are around cause that to happen. Uh, you know, there's people in this, in this group. I wouldn't mind you coming and help me work with my cattle. And there are probably people in this group, I tell you, get the heck out of here because you cause me more trouble then you're helping. So it's how us people, and well, I'm not naming names, but okay, I'll be quiet. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> I know that's hard, Burns Getter, for me. Senator, for me. Any further discussion on the amendment? Senator, just real quick, we'll have an offline discussion, but my uh, German Shepherd just really doesn't love my chief of staff. We can have an offline discussion about yeah. that. So. If you take, I will tell your chief of staff, carry a newspaper. <laughs> when that dog opens his mouth, I hope none of the real dog lugging people are here. I'm sorry. But then whenever, whenever he goes to bite you, you stick that newspaper down his throat and just keep going until he gags that newspaper back up, he'll leave you alone. I learned that on my paper route. Appreciate the tip, Thank you very much. <laughs> and then call the animal chiropractor. <laughs> exactly. All right. Any other discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of Amendment 1, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do, do have it. So we're going to roll this into a Senate committee substitute. So uh, I now move to adopt Senate committee substitute for House Bill 403 as amended. Do I have a second? Any discussion? All those in favor of Senate committee substitute for House Bill 403 as amended, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. We have adopted Senate Committee Substitute for House Bill 403. So I now move to vote House Committee or Senate Committee Substitute. Excuse me for House Bill 403. Do pass. Do I have a second? Any additional session? Ryan, please call the roll. Senators Bean, Aye. Black, Aye. Burns, Ketter, Aye. Brown, Aye. Carter, Crawford, Aye. McCreary, Razor, Aye. Washington. By a vote of eight to nothing, the motion carries. Eight to nothing, the motion carries. Next, I move the House Committee substitute for House Bill 88 be brought before the committee. Do I have a second? I have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. 
The eyes appear to have the eyes to have the bill's fourth committee. This is a representative of each bill that we just heard today. House Committee Substitute House Bill um, 88 modifies provisions relating to animal chiropractic practitioners. This is very similar to Senator Burnsketter's bill, Senate Bill um, 471. Uh, we heard that bill on March 28th and voted out uh, due pass 6-1. So any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I now move to um, vote House Committee Substitute House Bill 88 do pass. Um, once again, any discussion? Do I have a second? I have a second. Ryan, please call the roll to vote House Committee Substitute House Bill 88 out of committee do pass. Senators Bean. Aye. Black. Aye. Burns scattered. Aye. Brown. Aye. Carter. Crawford. Aye. McCreary. Razor. Aye. Washington. Eight to zero, motion carries. Oh, you wrote of eight to zero, the motion carries. I now move that House Committee Substitute for House Bill 576 be brought before the committee. Do you have a second? I have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The bills for the committee. This is Representative Shields that she just presented House Committee Substitute for House Bill 76 today that creates a, an offense of the interference with transportation of livestock. We heard a similar bill, uh, Senator Black's bill. 666 on March 13, 2023, or 2023, is voted out due pass by 6 1. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I move to vote House Committee Substitute House Bill 576 due pass. Do I have a second? I have a second. Any additional discussion? Ryan, please call the roll to vote House Committee Substitute House Bill 576 out of committee due pass. Senators Bean? Aye. Black? Aye. Burnscatter? Aye. Brown? Aye. Carter? Aye. Crawford? Aye. McCreary, Razor, Aye. Washington. By a vote to eight to zero, motion carries. By your vote of eight to zero, motion carries. Uh, I now that we move out of executive session, do I have a second? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have, the ayes do have, we're out of executive session. No further business coming for the committee. I vote uh, that we adjourn, do I have a second? All those in favor of that motion, please. Say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. We are adjourned.